Tana Hasey Coates has a uh, a great piece up from uh, yesterday, I guess it was, and he makes the argument, and part of the reason why I didn't follow the machinations of the trial per se, because in some respects, it's trials are 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 messy things, and the intricacies of a trial. Do not are not even designed to necessarily find the truth per se, and to provide a, a a greater lesson for society. I think there is a lesson to be learned here, but it it's far beyond what the trial is. And Todd Nehesi Code says the first the the two things that he has seen in terms of truth that did come out of the, of the case, is that based on the case presented by the state and based on Florida law, George Zimmerman should not have been convicted of second-degree murder or manslaughter. The second is that the killing of Trayvon Martin is a profound injustice. And his piece is about reconciling those two things. And he outlines how self-defense in this case when you are adjudicating self-defense, at least in this case, I think the only place uh, that it may be different in the entire country is in Ohio. There's a, a slightly different standard in terms of proving self-defense. Because in this case, the prosecution had to prove, the defense did not have to prove self-defense. The prosecution had to, beyond a reasonable doubt, show that this case was not a case of self-defense, that the moment of adjudicating self-defense, whether or not George Zimmerman acted in self-defense, happened after the first punch was thrown, after the scuffle began. And we don't know, it's almost impossible to know at this point, we know what the, the court has decided, but we don't really know what happened once they got into a physical altercation. But everything that led up to that point is moot in terms of self-defense. The following, the targeting, the menacing, the fear that was created with Trayvon Martin, none of that counts in this narrow question of self-defense. And under Florida law, George Zimmerman had no responsibility at any point to retreat. The state had to prove that Zimmerman had no reasonable fear for his life. And that's a very hard bar threshold to achieve. Uh, now, supposedly Stand Your Ground had nothing to do with this case, but uh, Todd Nahase Coast, you know, makes a point of saying that the judge's instructions to the jury included the phrase, he had no duty to retreat, and he had the right to stand his ground and meet force with force including de uh, deadly force if he reasonably believed that it was necessary to do so to prevent death or great bodily harm to himself. To overcome George Zimmerman's pr uh, presumption of innocence, the state had the burden of proving the crime with which George Zimmerman is charged was, uh, was committed, and George Zimmerman is the person who committed the crime. George Zimmerman is not required to present evidence or to prove anything in this case because of the reasonable doubt standard. Tana Hasey Coates go on to write, the injustice inherent in the killing of Trayvon Martin by George Zimmerman was not authored by a jury given a weak case. Injustice was authored by a country which has taken as its policy for the lion's share of its history to erect a pariah class. The killing of Trayvon Martin by George Zimmerman is not an error in programming. It is the correct result of forces we set in motion years ago and have done very little to arrest. 
And that is that we have, as a class, demonized black males in this country from stop and frisk to racial profiling to the way that they are portrayed in the media to the idea that you can get stopped by, uh, for driving while black. Society has still and I imagine it's simply been an ongoing project that perhaps in some small measure has declined over the years. But we still, as a society, automatically classify black men as a threat. And when you have laws like stand your ground, even if it's not necessarily directly uh, involved in this case, you're creating an atmosphere that allows people to act upon that racial animus. And it is always the least enfranchised in our country that will suffer when you have a law like that. That's the low-hanging fruit, essentially, for injustice. And he writes at the end, it's painful to say this, Trayvon Martin is not a miscarriage of American justice, but American justice itself. This is not our system malfunctioning, it's our system working as intended. There's a much bigger societal issue here at play that has led this guy, Trayvon Martin, to having been killed with very little accountability. <laughs>